the digital ID has officially begun. So guys, for those that are not paying attention, not that you're not paying attention, there's so much going on in the world, it's hard to keep up with what's being done, what's not being done, what's being said, what's not being said. So Australia has officially started their digital ID process, meaning right now it's at its infantile stage, a very babyish stage of the digital ID is currently going on in Australia. Now, I personally believe Australia is the testing model for this so that they can see how it works out and what kinks they have to iron out when they release it to the rest of the world. Now, as of right now, in Australia, it's a voluntary basis. And they repeat that throughout the entire website when you go on to look at it. Everything is voluntary, voluntary, voluntary. That's conditioning because they want you to believe that it's voluntary. And then they start upping the ante and then sort of forcing your hand to getting a digital ID. But as of right now, in Australia, it's voluntary. So digital ID, guys, is where each country's government who's trying to or looking to initiate the digital ID, they want to make things easier for you. They want to keep down fraud and identity theft by way of everyone carrying their personal digital ID, which is normally on their phones as of right now. Now, there is talk about upgrading digital ID to your iris, your eyes, or putting a chip somewhere in your body that's specifically registered to you, and then no one else can copy it, which is, again, BS. Anything that has any kind of coding, anything that has any kind of signal can be replicated and copied, period. There is no such thing, guys, as not being able to copy a signal. It might be harder to do harder to mimic that signal or code in your implanted ID that's implanted in your body, excuse me, but eventually hackers figure it out. So the governments of the world are trying to sell you this nonsense to make you feel safer. So where they try to make you feel safer is that they talk about less fraud, less identity theft. That's where the big sell is. Also, it makes process is easier to get things done. For example, in Australia, they want people to get government funding, for example, which would be like uh, welfare, whatever it is, their version of it. If you have a digital ID, it makes it easier for them to identify you and you can get those fundings a lot faster versus somebody like me walking in going, sir, can I have some more? They'd be like, no, nigga, get out of here because you don't have digital ID, and this process, because you don't have digital ID, it's going to take up to eight weeks. Meanwhile, prior to the digital ID, it took two, three weeks. But because you don't have it, they're going to up the weeks of you getting your help or the help needed so that it forces your hand to get the digital ID. Meanwhile, they say, you don't have to, but it'll make life easier. And there goes the voluntary bullshit. So in Australia, they have three levels. They have basic, standard, and strong. I thought basic and standard were the same thing, but whatever. So basic, standard, and strong. As of right now, basic is just you signing up online and not needing anything else, right? So you like you sign your name, your email, maybe your cell phone number, done. Standard and, and strong are where they get interesting because right now, standard and strong you need to provide them more paperwork, which will be like your birth certificate, your Australian ID, driver's license, whatever that might be. You supply that to them, and then you get a basic or strong, depending on what you need it for. Now, clearly, if you have a strong digital ID, you don't need basic and you don't need standard. So they're definitely going to force everybody's hand into getting the strong version so that you're covered. Now, of course, Australians, because they're like lemmings, they follow everything their government tells them to do. Most of these people are probably going to sign up for this. I don't know what the the percentage is as of now, but most po people probably will. And they are asking people, again, to use this for, let's say, shopping online at a store. I don't know why I would need a digital ID for that, but whatever. But again, it gets interesting if you need any government supplements, like, again, welfare or some kind of disaster relief. If you have a digital ID, it's faster for you to get that money and funding and even your tax returns because they threw that shit in there. Get your tax returns in a less amount of time. Actually, they said get it in minutes. 
I was like, really? And of course, people are like, well, my tax return right now, they're going to sign up for the digital ID. I will wait the five, six, eight, nine, 12 weeks a year for my tax return. I'm not signing up for the digital ID. But that's where they get people. They get you with the money. Because when they bring that here to the United States, because they will, they're definitely going to roll out the digital ID and way up, oh, you can get your tax returns in seconds. They're going to one-up Australia and not say minutes, in seconds. As soon as you click and verify yourself, you get your money. This is how they get people. And they're going to get a lot of people with that bullshit because everybody wants their money now. Because we guys, for the last 20 years, have been getting conditioning on wanting things now, right now, right this minute. And this is actually translating over to our kids, which is absolutely going to damage our kids in the long run because our kids even want everything now. So, of course, now when the digital ID comes out and they tell you, oh, you can get your shit in seconds, you can get governmental assistance in seconds, people are going to press that button. Another hurricane goes through, you got your digital ID, you're going to get paid off in seconds. Versus myself, who has to hand in the paperwork, wait weeks to get a check, then the check has to go into the bank and take days to get cleared. And the banks are probably going to be on it because they're going to take days to clear your check and not a couple of hours. You know, sometimes... They release part of the check, and then in a couple days, they release the rest. They're just going to make it a way to go. Instead of the three days, they're probably going to make it a week. This is how they get you. They're going to get people and woo people with the money. They're going to woo you in. They're going to be like, this is what you can get if you sign up. Now, in Australia, they are stating that your digital ID is not going to replace your physical copy, paperwork, whatever that is. That you're still going to need that. But it makes things faster with digital ID. And again, they're using that word faster. They're using the word volunteer. They're using the word you can get it in minutes and or, well, minutes. You can get your funding, whatever, in, in minutes. Again, I'm not sure why, but with the level three, which is strong, this is where things become very interesting. You need to provide at least two acceptable IDs, ID documents, such as your Australian driver's license, Medicare card, or your Australian birth certificate, and one must have your photo on it. For example, your Australian passport. You also need to prove that you are the same person as shown in the ID document by scanning your face with your smart device, i.e. your phone. You might use this level of proofing to access welfare or related government service and or funding, like I said earlier. So what are the benefits? The benefits, guys, are digital ID lets you access online services without looking for your physical ID documents or going to a government or business office. You can manage your affairs from anywhere whenever you want. That's another sell. They're telling people, hey, you could stay home and just get everything you need on your computer and not have to bother our government employees who don't do shit anyway because those bags of shit like to make your fucking life harder every time you walk in the office. So being that everybody knows that, they rather stay home and deal with the online process, i.e. digital ID. So here are the cells of this digital ID. Reduces the need to remember username and or password to sign into online services. Enables more services to be offered online with a secure way to check your ID whenever, wherever you are and whenever you want at any time. Not replace any of your ID documents it will give you a simpler and safer way to prove your ID and again they have this digital ID for businesses it makes businesses makes running a business and or interacting with somebody easier and they say well you don't have to give the business your ID your paperwork you can just use your digital ID which is on your phone right now so they scan your phone and then they got everything they need and then they say the businesses lose that information about you after the business is done I find that to be a little interesting because I'm like, all right, so if I use this, as soon as I'm done doing business with these people, my digital ID information is gone. It's not collected in their system. I doubt that very much because businesses are sneaky, but still, guys, this is the beginning of the digital ID. Your Australia right now is the model the world is going to watch, and I guarantee you in about three, five years, we're going to see it here in the United States. Canada is probably going to be the first, the second bag of ships to do it, then the UK, and then us. Anyway, guys, this is The Angry Prepper. Thank you for watching.